First off, uh, my name is Andy Schaaf. I am the operations manager for navigation uh, and basically for the Mississippi River in the St. Louis district, which uh, basically is the state of Missouri. Technically, it's from Hannibal down to Cairo. Uh, so um, we have uh, the locks and dams, dredging, the other rock work that goes on the river, the management of the lands and the shore, uh, the floodplains around um, around the river through that stretch. Uh, we have environmental and uh, recreational use uh, of the river, all falls under our uh, project. Um, with me, uh, Danny Lunsford, he's dressed like he works, but he's a manager too, he doesn't do anything. Do <laughs> <laughs> you buy that with the grease on it? Like 30 years old. <laughs> uh, da Danny is the uh, uh, man navigation manager for this part of the river in St. Louis. We actually have two, one for the, uh, uh, from Mel Price on down. Mel Price is at Alton, and Danny is from that point uh, on up. So he's got locks 24, uh, and 25 and the areas in between. Uh, Tony Reese is the lock master for this facility. So he's in charge of all the operation, all the maintenance, uh, all the problems with, uh, with this lock and dam um, here. So we talked a little bit and what I think it will be best, and we actually, uh, we actually have a tow coming in now. Uh, so before it gets any cooler, as that sun drops down, it's gonna start getting cold fast. Uh, we're going to walk around, and so we're going to go out this way and go down, right, and we're going to walk across the Meyer Gates and up the other side, and hopefully we'll get to see the tow, um, shoot 1,200 foot? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, so, we all, so hopefully we'll see it, and, and, and that's, that's a couple of things I want to, uh, points I want to leave with you, and then we, we'll come back here, and, and time permitting, we'll answer as many questions. Um, uh, as we can about the facility or about uh, some of the decisions or funding that are made at higher um, higher levels. So one thing, and Mike, Mike um, alluded to this, one of the big things go, uh, going on right now with the core is the 600 foot versus the 1200 foot lock. So this is a 600 foot lock chamber. So the tow that's coming in is going to have to push nine barges in, stop, get out, break all the face wires off, back the, uh, back the uh, line boat and six barges out. Then we'll shut the upper gates, that, that will be locked through. Uh, then we'll use an, uh, what we call an electric mule or an electric hoist to pull their barges out and bore them down along the lower wall, cycle the chamber back the other direction and the rest of the tow will come through and then we, he'll make up and, and go on down. And this tow's already come through a number of locks just like this, so they've already broke up each time. So to give you some comparison, uh, on a good day, they could probably get that all done. If everything goes just right, a little under two hours, a little under two hours, that's a good day. And this is probably a pretty good day right now. A little bit of wind, you know, and pulling these out becomes a problem. Different river conditions, different outdrafts become a problem. And ice is huge. Ice can make that two hours, seven, eight, 10 hours, who knows? Because once you break the toe apart, then you have to get all the ice out from between them to put them back together. By comparison, down at Alton, uh, Lock and Dam 26, which has been rededicated as Mount Price Lock and Dam, uh, maybe some of you have been down there with the 1200 foot chamber. When this toe gets down there, it'll go through in less than 30 minutes. Um, so when you take that through, you know, 26, 27 locks that they may have to go through, you know, from top to bottom, and again, the big the big um, season here is what we're into right now, the harvest season. Um, September, October usually starts, runs through December. Uh, occasionally, it runs into January. So we're trying. It's actually trying to outrun the ice. The locks further north are going to start closing. So whatever <coughs> the farmers can get for their products, they're trying to get through, uh, as opposed to storing it for. Um, the winter. So this is the busy season um, for us. So when we talk about unscheduled lockage, unscheduled breakdowns, unscheduled outages, you know, it's sort of like, um, you know, your, the tire on your car only goes flat when you need it. Well, of course that's the only time it goes flat. And that's, you know, we don't have these kind of breakdowns, it seems, you know, in June when things slow down a little bit or even March. It's always this time of the year uh, and, it, and it 
and it makes the headlines and it makes all of our job a lot tougher. So, um, and then one other thought on the funding end of it, at least, at least from a very high level, uh, there's three basic funding streams that come down for the locks. Now, what we manage here, um, and, and actually Danny managed, this is all that he manages, is all operation and maintenance money, all O&M money. It's for your basic uh, operation of the facility, and we call it bare bones maintenance. They've got a skeleton crew, uh, do routine grazing, you know, changing oil, minor repairs. Uh, we have a little bit of discretionary funds above that that are also O&M, but that's shared between three or four of the locks to do, I hate to use the word major, because major maintenance implies on the budget and programming level something completely different. So sometimes Danny will say, yeah, we got a major maintenance, and that's what he means is he needs help from one of the other locks and dams, or he needs additional money from the staff down at the project office. Not major maintenance as it's defined in the program world, the, the budget world, or uh, the congressional world. So it, 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 it does, these terminologies get um, uh, mixed up. The um, uh, construction general funding, which is what these 1,200 foot locks would be funded out of, are, is a specific appropriation to recapitalize the project or improve the capacity of it. Now, one of the problems with the NEST program, which is basically the 1,200 foot locks um, on seven facilities that have been identified on the Illinois River and the Upper Miss, is they've, they've written, the authorization is written strictly around capacity. Uh, and the increase from, and, and that is a big part of it, but, but if you, when you add a new lock here, you are going to increase the reliability of the project. Because first of all, you have redundancy with a second lock, and you also have a brand new lock. Um, so that's one of the things, we, we've, we've kind of always pitched our message following the authority, and for lack of a better word, the flavor of the month, depending upon which administration is in there, uh, instead of just, you know, calling it, what it is all the time. So, um, so you have this um, increase for the capacity, the recapitalization. This project has had a major rehab where we came in and we fixed things in place, put them back the way, supposedly recapitalized the reliability that they had in 1940 uh, when the lock was was open. Um, but there were no improvements in terms of you know capacity or efficiency the way the uh, uh, the nest money would do and then the O and M money is the money we get every year again we consider it bare bones uh, very little discretionary money that these guys use to operate and do the minor maintenance of the locks so I can answer any questions on that or we can come back and ask, answer some more after you look around so um,